Hi everyone, Miranda Patrone here. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice or lack thereof, but I've been really sick lately and I thank you so much for all the well wishes. I'm back to do another mandala with you today and I think we're going to go for a flower again. I just really enjoy doing those. They're so happy and uplifting and kind of need that right now. So I think this orchid is going to give me a little inspiration. I finally got a plant to rebloom and stay alive for that matter. As I have a black thumb, which is why I paint flowers instead of trying to grow them and cultivate them. But somebody, I believe it was my husband, gave me this one when our son was born. And it's interesting because it was bluer. It was like a darker purple blue the first time it bloomed. But now it's got this great fuchsia pink color. And <clears throat> I think we're going to go off of that today to do um, flower. So let's get started. Alright, so I have this great stone here that I found, and I'm actually kind of excited about it. It's on an angle, so it already kind of has its own display. So if you put it on a flat surface, you'll be able to see. Plus, when I'm painting it, you'll be able to see it easier. <clears throat> so I already dripped black on it, but I'm going to paint the whole thing black anyway, because it's, it's kind of very discolored and not the most beautiful. But it will be when we're done, so... I'm going to paint the whole stone black for a background. I'm not going to make you watch me do that, but I'm just going to let you know I'm going to paint the whole thing black and then we'll work our way from there. Alright, so I just painted the whole stone black using the Deco Art Black. And we're going to let that dry and then we'll get started. Okay, so I'm going to get out my measuring tape here because this stone is not round, obviously. So we're going to Try to find the estimated center here. So it's about four out to here, but my actual surface that I probably can paint on only comes to here. So that's about three and three quarters. And usually I like to eyeball it because it makes my life easier. <laughs> Just because it's easier for me, especially on these stones that aren't... Um, shaped perfectly like a circle. Sometimes I just kind of eyeball where I put it, but I'm doing this so that you guys can just see, estimate where you want your center to be so you can keep things symmetrical. So I just tossed a dot there, but so what did I say? 3.75. <clears throat> so does that about 1.8 something, I think? So this will be 1.75. So, oh, that actually wasn't a bad guess. So Right about here would be the center for here, for this side. <clears throat> and then we're going to turn, or turn the tape measure just to get the opposite direction. Because it's way shorter, it's only three and a half out to here, but probably the painting surface is to about three and a quarter. So that's 3.25. So that's about 1.6, so there's one and a half is here. One and three quarters is there, so yeah, <laughs> that's funny. All right, there's my dot. Really, it's just been years of just kind of guessing that I get the estimate, eyeballing it, but you'll get really good at it the more you do it. So just keep on getting at it. And if you don't, that's why we have measuring tools, so it's not a big deal. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I found my center here. I'm going to not do a background with this because the background is already black so I think our pink orchid colors fuchsia and all this are gonna pop really good on the black so I'm not gonna do a circular background so we'll just kind of see where the stone goes with this one but <clears throat> at least you have an estimate of the size of the stone that you can use for yours so about three and three quarters in diameter Alright, so I'm going to start with white for the center, and then I have my brushes here from Princeton, the angled detailers, and actually for my birthday my husband bought me another set of liners, so I'm going to be using those as well to do this stone today. I like to get my center down and then at least the beginnings 
of the mandala and then draw the petals around it. So it just kind of gives me an idea of how I can fit it on this each stone. So. <coughs> A little bigger on this. And then this one, instead of our plus sign like I normally do, I'm just I want to fit petals in so. I'm only going to do six dots instead of the eight. Alright, so now instead of pencil, I like to use something that's easily removed from the stone. So I have a broken dot <coughs> stylus here, or I broke the end off. Ordinarily they have a ball end like this. And I just broke it off so that it scratches on, it'll etch on to here. <clears throat> and I can draw on whatever I'm working with. So I'm just going to sketch out some petals and see what what we can do here with this size stone. <clears throat> and you can always, if you want yours to be exactly the same, you can always trace one on a piece of cardboard or something like that and cut yourself out a template and then you can use it all the way around. <coughs> With this, if I don't like what I've put on there, I can just wet it and it'll erase the lines. <laughs> so that's the handy part about etching. I had some sparkles in that one. I don't know why, but <laughs> we'll have a sparkly stone this time. That's okay. Okay, so I erase those. Sometimes you just have to keep <clears throat> reworking it till you get it how you really want. And since I did six on here, I think I'll, I'll alternate. I'll do three and three. And you can use chalk or, let's see, some things that are easy. You could even use pencil. I just don't like dealing with all the eraser marks that come with it, so... You can use whatever you want to draw your flower and just kind of sketch it out to how you want on your stone. Alright, so I ended up doing it in pencil because I went a little bit of a different direction. <clears throat> so I did three. These ones here first. So you can see they actually start down around the white dot and work their way up. This one, this one, and this one here. And then these two, <coughs> excuse me, this set of three are kind of like they're going to look like they're behind the other petals. So we're starting up a little higher on the first three that we made. And they're just going to make three petals like that. I think it's going to be a fun design. There. So only the first three go all the way down to your white dots. And the other petals are going to be behind the first three. <clears throat> so we'll try this and see how it goes. I think I'm going to get the first ones that we drew. That go all the way down to the white stone. Or white dots rather in the cherry blossom pink. And we'll outline those ones first. Alright, so we're going to outline the first three petals in the cherry blossom pink. <clears throat> and I usually start in the center of the petal just because I like the biggest dots to be there. And then work my way out towards the ends. So 
as you're gonna lose paint off your dotting tool or your brush or whatever you're using they'll get the dots will get smaller <clears throat> So we have our first three done. And I'm gonna go with a darker color for the other petals. I think maybe like a deep magenta. Now so for these ones we're started up higher already. So you're gonna keep the dots a little thicker at the starting point. Alright, so I think I'm going to use this nice, very metallic <coughs> to do 
I think I'm going to work kind of like a contrasting color type thing. So on the lighter one, petals is where I'll start with the berry and we'll do one big dark one here to start out our petals. <clears throat> and then we'll do a light colored here and give us a little contrast on our design. So I think that'll be fun. So we'll try it and we'll see where it goes. Alright, so I'm using Thistle Blossom from Deco Art to do the other lighter color. And I think, just like on the orchid, just to go a little kind of with the theme of the colors, I'm going to use this <coughs> Luscious Lemon and do one ring of yellow around each of the dots here. It's going to be the next thing I do. So I'm going to get a small liner brush or your smallest dotting tool to do that. Okay, so this is just a liner brush. It's a size 18-0. Or is it? <clears throat> it's really tiny. I'm using that lemon yellow to just go around it once here. And somebody asked me how I get to the, the sizes of the dots uniform. And I, I guess just practice, but as you start at the top, like I'm saying, you know, start at the middle, they'll get smaller as you lose the paint off the brush or your tool. The same with these, you know, you start at the top of the circle, and as you work your way down and around, you lose paint off your brush or your tool, and the dots get smaller. I am pushing less though, just in the interest of full disclosure. I'm not pushing down as hard as when I make a larger dot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, if you haven't watched one of my videos before, <coughs> excuse me, I pause in between rounds so the dots have time to dry and they don't bleed into one another. You know, I can't tell that probably from the video, but after I do each round, I'll pause in between and let them dry, but I don't want to make you sit here and watch paint dry, so, and we don't just want to waste anybody's time, so. I pause it and allow them to dry in between each round just so that we don't have ones bleeding into one another. Alright, so I'm going to use the berry now on the ones that 
or the darker outlined petal. I'm going to go around the yellow with the berry. <clears throat> and you don't have to be precise, like if I'm fitting four dots around one side, four around the other, eight dots around here, yours might not. Maybe your petals are thinner or thicker. But you'll see the pattern start to emerge the more we work our way out the petal. So I'm going to skip the light petal, go to the dark one here, the berry. That's some berry metallic from Deco Art. I think so we don't get confused. I'll just work the dark petals first and then we'll go back and fill in the light petals. So next I'll do that deep magenta that we outline the dark petals in after the berry. Next I'm doing Thistle Blossom. Alright, the next two are actually going to be Apple Barrel brand, just because I haven't been able to mix this colors, these two colors that I really like, the Cranberry and then Honeysuckle after that. <clears throat> so the Cranberry is just a little bit darker, but it's a nice bright pink. And they take a little bit of finesse with working the dots just because they're a little bit um, of a tackier paint. They'll make like a string sometimes connected as you pull it up. So you have to make sure you pull it completely off your rock or your canvas, whatever you're working on. Otherwise you might just have a line of paint flop over onto your piece. And then you have a whole other issue to deal with. <laughs>
so that was the cranberry. The next will be the honeysuckle. You can kind of see the pattern starting to emerge a little nicer <clears throat> the more you fill it in and going from like like the ombre idea dark to light or light to dark and just doing the variation of the different pinks I just think it looks pretty and I've done that with the blues and you can do it really with any of the colors just work your way on down dark to light, light to dark, and you'll have a, a neat pattern form. Okay, the next one is a peony pink, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit less purple. Alright, so the next round is this, well, the label's at the top, Party Pink from Deco Art, and it's a lot brighter, a lot lighter, which is perfect because we're getting out towards the end of our petals here anyway. Okay, next one is a wild rose pink. And then the last one I'll use is the cherry blossom that we outlined our lighter petals with at the beginning. <clears throat>
I'm not sure about your stone, but I'm not going to make it all the way to the end of the petal, which is fine. I kind of like leaving a little bit <clears throat> of the negative space. But if you want to go all the way to the end of your petal, you can do that. Or sometimes I've even just put a large dot at the end or another design from the opposite direction. Just whatever you decide to do with your design. Oh, see, I dragged that one. But that's okay. I'll just paint over it black and redo it. That's the beauty of having a background, too, is being able to just go, if you make a mistake, just wipe off most of the paint and then go back over it with your background and start all over. It's just totally fine. Sometimes my mistakes are actually how I've came, come up with other designs. It's kind of funny. I don't think there's much I can do with this guy though. He's flopped over. So I'll just go over it with black and then redo it. Alright, while that black is drying, I kind of want to start on the other petals here. And we're, since we went from dark to light here, I'm thinking we'll go light to dark on the light petals. We'll do the opposite. <clears throat> so we'll start with the cherry blossom. And the next one's the wild rose pink. And then the party pink. I'm making these dots a little bigger just for something different on the other petals. See, I'm still using the same brush, so you can do that. I just put a little more paint on and push down a little harder. <clears throat> or you use your different size dotting tools. Okay, then thistle blossom. No, that wasn't right. <clears throat> I did the honeysuckle and cranberry. <laughs> okay, just kidding, sorry. Let's see. It's not the end of the world, but... If I'm going to keep with the same pattern. And like I said, this paint's a little thicker, so maybe I'll do the dots just a little bit smaller so we don't have any flop over issues. And 
And my petals, my lighter petals, are actually a little thinner than the, fa um, the darker petals. So I'm doing larger dots and I'm not fitting as many. <clears throat> Pardon me. I think I'm going to skip the cranberry and just go to the thistle blossom. But you can do whatever you want, just depending on the size of your stone and just the size of your petals and what you want to do with your design. But this is me changing my mind in the middle. Just kind of go with the flow as I go. Sorry. But that's why I'm trying to talk a lot, because then you can kind of hear the thoughts out loud, as crazy as they may be sometimes. This is the thistle blossom. <clears throat> and then let's go with the magenta, the deep magenta. And my paints are starting to thicken a little because I did not put a wet paper towel over them. But you can do that to kind of spare yourself wasting paint. Um, especially if you're going to continue with the same colors all in one piece. Just put a little wet paper towel over your palette. <clears throat> or you don't pour as much. You know, just pour a little tiny bit to use each time. for the dark berry and that's a metallic so it is a little bit thicker as well I have too much on this brush so I'm gonna actually unload it on one of the other petals so the dots not as big And then too, I'm not wasting the paint, you know, if I use it somewhere else on my piece as opposed to just wiping it off and reloading the brush, you can <clears throat> just drop it off somewhere else. Okay. I kind of am leaning towards putting a dot in each of the light ones here of the berry. Yep, I think I'm going to do that. So, I'm going to do a top dot above here. Just to kind of give it a little more character. But, you can see how nice the petals look like that. I think it's great. So, now we have to think about leaves for our little guy. <clears throat> a little flower here. And I'm thinking... With these nice pinks, the deco art makes a really nice ocean green. Let's see, where did I put it? This ocean green. It's a really nice color, so I think I'm going to start off with my leaves. Or my leaf type area. <laughs> In the dark ocean green. So, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to make a fairly large... dot in here all the way around in between every single petal
Okay, next do the grasshopper green. We'll just do three little dots around that dark one we made. I want to do. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. One thing I said, I think, in my last video, too, that you want to do is if you're if you're kind of winging it like I do and you just start in the center and work your way out, one of the things just to make sure you keep your symmetry, too, is to make sure that you're going to be able to fit what you want to put in there for design. So, for instance, I just said I wanted to put three of the greens, the lighter greens. So I just want to kind of estimate as I go around and make sure that I've kept everything spacious enough to fit three dots around every side sometimes you know all the dots really are not perfectly the same size so you may get to a point as you've worked out to the edge of a stone where you just don't have the space all the way around and it's okay to be lopsided too I mean I've had times where I decide oh I'm just gonna put all the drags on one side I kind of like that look sometimes being lopsided <laughs> Which is fine, just gives it a whole new design feel to it. Dot drags. Hmm. Now that I said dot drags, I'm kind of thinking I'm doing a couple in my leaves. <laughs> and that happens too. You know, you may plan something and then change your mind. So, but that's the beauty of art. Sorry, I didn't realize it wasn't recording. So, I didn't like this drag right here. <clears throat> I got a little wobbly. So, I just went over it, scraped it off, and went over it with black again. And I'm going to let that dry. And then I did tuck another of our cherry blossom back over there where I made a mistake. <laughs> and after this dries too, what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, because I use pencil, I'll just go over it lightly with an eraser see on this one maybe you can see it better so you can still see the pencil lines here in the negative space so once everything's dried thoroughly I'll just gently go over that with an eraser on all the spots that are still visible <clears throat> and then just kind of brush it off the stone lightly so that it doesn't get in the paint and then when you varnish it you won't have the lines there when you varnish it so and I'm debating on just keeping it simple like this for the leaves. I kind of like that. But you get the idea of filling in your petals and you can do that all the way around. You could use the same color. You could go ombre with other colors. 
dark blue to light blue. I've done that one on there on one of the YouTube videos before as well. It came out pretty. It was actually a copy of one I had done years and years ago that came out really nicely that I used for my YouTube, um, I don't know what you call it, avatar picture. <laughs> the main profile picture, so. Alright, so that is where I'm going to leave off, I think. Just, I'm going to fill in that one last little green swoop, comma stroke, whatever you want to call it. And <clears throat> just let this guy dry, and then I'll erase all the pencil marks, and then I'll varnish it. So, I hope you enjoyed doing this stone with me today. It was a fun little orchid colored flower. And, yeah, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Again, I apologize for the voice today. Thanks for bearing with me with this cold. It's ridiculous. So, um, if you're looking for my other videos, feel free. You can subscribe to my channel and you will see them all there. And even back in the olden days <laughs> when I first started doing some of the videos. So, <clears throat> I hope you enjoy them and I hope to hear from you all in the feedback or in the comics, comment section. <laughs> um, leave whatever feedback you want. Let me know what you don't like, what you do like, um, what you would like to see. Um, also, you know, if you have any questions, I try to answer those if, as much as possible that I can get to. And I hope you all have an awesome day. Take care.